Maternal mortality remains a public health crisis. And what is shocking is we are the only developed country that is seeing a rising rate in maternal mortality. And this is despite the fact that we have more resources, we have more access, and we have advancements in medical care. Some women have more comorbidities like hypertension or diabetes or even obesity, which can have an impact on maternal mortality. There's a rising rate of C-sections in this country. One out of three women currently have birth by a cesarean, and we know that this can also increase the risk of complications like sepsis. A recent article from the Journal of the American Medical Association showed that up to 23% of in-hospital maternal deaths were from sepsis. Sepsis is the body's overwhelming and life-threatening response to an infection, and this can cause tissue damage, organ failure, and death. There is a decreased immune response during pregnancy so that there's not an immune reaction to the fetus. And this can actually make them more susceptible to serious illness that's associated with sepsis. There are so many changes that happen to a woman when she gets pregnant. There's almost every organ is affected. Some of the changes that we look for when a patient is developing an infection can be clouded by vital sign changes during pregnancy. Pregnant women don't always have the same signs and symptoms that the general public has when they have sepsis. So we do not use the same parameters that are for the general population. In pregnancy, sepsis can look like a lot of other conditions. The heart rate becomes elevated with an infection. However, during pregnancy, the woman's heart rate elevates between 15 and 25%. Pregnant women tend to have a lower blood pressure during pregnancy, and that's also one of the signs of developing an infection. The white blood cell count becomes elevated during pregnancy, especially during labor and the immediately postpartum period. And it's also elevated when a person has an infection. We know that shortness of breath can be a common occurrence with pregnancy, but it is also an early sign of sepsis. There is some evidence to suggest that pregnant women may not develop a fever even during sepsis. So a combination of all of these factors can make it even more challenging to diagnose sepsis during pregnancy. Warning signs include maybe just starting with being fatigued and then profound fatigue. Well, I would expect a mom to be tired after giving birth and caring for a newborn. Profound fatigue is not normal and is a sign of sepsis. Not being able to do your normal activities of daily living is a warning sign. Dizziness or vertigo could be because the blood pressure is dangerously low. Fever, chills, shortness of breath, chest pain, abdominal pain, confusion, and that something just is not right. It can also be very subtle and nonspecific, so you're not really thinking sepsis, because if they tell us that something's not right or not normal, they're often right. We need to have a high index of suspicion. We need to think, could this be sepsis? There are some unique symptoms that can occur before birth, and one of those is decreased fetal movement. So the baby not moving as much as it should or has been is a red flag. Also, women that get an infection in pregnancy often get contractions. So preterm labor, contractions that are too soon or too early would also be a risk factor. Women can have any infection, but what's specific to them are infections in the urinary tract, in the genital tract, or in the uterus. And those infections can trigger sepsis. C-section is one of the major contributors to sepsis. We know that the most common organism tends to be E. coli, but we've seen an increase in group A strep over the years. With group A sepsis, it is very likely that a mom will get the signs of sepsis early and quick and then become very sick in a very short condensed time period. There's no specific sepsis test per se, such as yes or no sepsis, or even a test to help determine vulnerability to sepsis. However, there are some tests that can help guide a provider to a diagnosis of sepsis based on the entire clinical picture. The majority of moms, they're young and healthy, and they can look deceptively well until they're not, and then they can rapidly deteriorate. There is a very narrow window 
with sepsis. It is lightning fast from the time that you would have the first symptom of sepsis until you're gravely ill. It can be less than 24 hours. With some organisms, it can be a couple of hours. And in some cases, pregnant women can rapidly deteriorate and the results can be catastrophic. Sepsis is more severe when organs are affected and this often presents as altered mental status. That could mean that the woman has some anxiety, some confusion, she's just not thinking right. Again, she could say, oh, this is because I haven't gotten enough sleep, I'm tired, I'm fatigued. But the truth of the matter, it can mean that her organs are not getting the blood flow that they need. And one of the organs that's really important is the brain. Things like pain and exhaustion and anxiety are so common in the postpartum period. And so it's very easy to think this is the new normal. So warning signs in the postpartum period include an increase in bleeding, Pain that is out of proportion to be what is expected is another big warning sign. Yes, there is some discomfort with childbirth, but it is not common to have pain that is increasing or just not what you would imagine you should be having. After cesarean delivery, the wound should be healing and should not start opening up. If there's any increased redness, drainage, or pus, that is concerning. And if there's any increased pain in that area, it should be getting better. And definitely, if there's any kind of foul-smelling discharge, that woman needs to seek medical care. In some cases, women might experience a decrease in milk supply. They can't make milk because they're not having good perfusion. And that includes all organs, including their brain. That is what stimulates your body to tell you to make milk. And so if a woman stops making milk, that is not a normal thing. Women often think that if they have survived childbirth, then the worst is over and they should be really on the uphill. And that's not always the case. You're having to adjust to a new baby. There's a lot of sleepless nights. There is some pain and discomfort associated with childbirth as well. And so it's very easy for women to normalize it, but they're not superheroes and they need to reach out if they're not feeling well. For every maternal death, there's an estimated 50 women who suffered a life-threatening illness from sepsis with some long-term effects, both physically and mentally. Some of the signs include nightmares, panic attacks, overall weakness, muscle and joint pain, and difficulty concentrating. It is not uncommon for women to have post-traumatic stress disorder related to having sepsis in pregnancy. Many women lose their fertility. They actually might even lose a limb. So there are significant consequences that women are left with even if they do survive sepsis. We don't typically think of our pregnant or newly delivered mom as a patient that's gonna have sepsis. So we do have to have it on our radar and have a high level of suspicion. Even though the numbers are small, you know, the outcome can be very grave. It can be really hard to bring a newborn baby to the hospital or leave that newborn with someone else. And that can delay treatment. Even if a woman doesn't quite know how to explain what's wrong, she should feel empowered to seek care. In some cases, women really cannot advocate for themselves. And so we really rely on relatives or loved ones to speak up and advocate for them. They know the patient best. They know when something's not right. And in my experience, it is often the relative or loved one who is able to say that the patient needs to be seen and needs help. I think it's really important that we cast a wide net when we're talking about sepsis awareness. You know, medical professionals, yes, we need to know. Patients, they need to know during pregnancy what to expect. We need to be telling them on discharge what to expect when they leave the hospital. They need to know the signs of sepsis. We also need relatives and loved ones to know, the general public to know. Um, this will actually help prevent cases of sepsis because we know with early identification and treatment, we actually can make a difference. Although there are challenges in the recognition and treatment of maternal sepsis, there is hope.
Looking at the research, there is a high percentage of preventability if we do early recognition and treatment. There are many research studies going on right now about what maternal sepsis looks like so that we can recognize it even earlier and provide early treatment that we know can improve outcomes. Maternal deaths are tragic. Each person is a mother, a daughter, a friend, a partner. We want to do everything we can do to help prevent maternal deaths from sepsis. Suspect sepsis, save lives. Thank you.